Thanks for joining us today on VIP TV, the new English welterweight champion, Sam Andway. Uh, congratulations on your win last week, Sam. Uh, a great night for you, the best so far? Um, good. It was good. It was good to see them. I reckon there was there was a lot of uh, ring rust. Um, um, right after the fight, I told Col I told um, Aaron, I was like, oh man, I, I, I could have made it be even better. I, I think I'm a, a very harsh critic on myself, but to be honest, I think it was it was a good fight. Um, it was it was a fight after a year back because my first Southpaw um, opponent as a professional as well. So all in all, uh, I think it was a good good performance. Yeah, I know that Darren had lost his last fight in a British title yeah. eliminator against uh, yeah. Liam Taylor, but he was still yeah. a slight favourite as well. So, uh, yeah, of course, uh, you, you was the one who had to step up in the eyes of a lot of people. Of course, you know, um, I think I, I came in with uh, quite a few fights less than he had. He had about twenty-one fights. I was on my thirteenth. Um, I knew he was quite experienced as well. Um, and when we got in, when we got in there, probably about the second round. I started to realise he was doing things that was a bit more experienced, like more like I think none of my opponents have been like punching in the clinch so much and just little little details that that I could tell. Okay, yeah, this guy's a bit bit more experienced, but um, yeah, I didn't didn't make it get to my head or anything like that. I just went in there and done what we had to do. Yeah, you said you know he showed you little things there. How much will that win bring you on as a fighter? Oh, a lot, a lot. I think um, definitely because um. Uh, it's, it's, I've had, to, I did have to adjust in there, uh, quite a bit. Um, I had to, um, I went in there with the first two rounds, you know, trying to steamroll him. I was like, Do you know, I'm going to get him out of there, and then um, having to calm down a little bit, of, um, in this, in the third and fourth round, then picked it back up. So there's little lessons I could learn in, in that fight. So there's a really good, good learning fight for me. Really good yeah, learning I mean, fight. Because we saw your, your skills in that, and we've also, you know, we've seen the other side of you in the Jez Smith fight when you just go to war. So, you know, yeah. you being the boxer or the warmonger? Uh, both. I think um, it depends on the situation, what, what what the situation brings out of you. And uh, some fighters you're going to have to box, some fighters you're going to have to just go to war with. And um, I enjoy both. I enjoy both, to be honest. Um, there always gets to a point in a, in a lot of matches where you become like an ego thing. Someone hits you with a good shot, you're like, all right, come on, and, and you just want to get in the scrap. But um, yeah, it depends. Like, the situation brings brings it out of you a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, you're moving into to British title contention. I don't know how soon you want that fight, but would you want a few more fights? But as you say, you was a lot less um, experienced than Darren Tetley last week. You're still mm. learning. You know, how do you, how do you rate the British waterweight situation at the moment? You know, you've got Jenkins and Echo Esterman, You've had yeah. Josh Kelly last week against having yeah. There's Connor Ben, you know, there's, you know, Mike, uh, Mike McIntosh, isn't it? Um, yeah, from um, <laughs> that, his name is just a boy. Mike McIntosh, yeah, yeah. yeah, from McKinson. Uh, McKinson down in Portsmouth. How do you rate the um, situation in the division at the moment? Um, it's, uh, well, it's, it's definitely a thriving division. There's a lot going on, especially. Uh, the start of this year there's fights going on back to back um i believe I, i'm i believe i'm i'm top top, top two what awaits and i'm not number two so that's what i say to everyone mm -hmm. top two are not number two i believe that I, I can definitely get to the top of the um the top of the water the weight division here in um uk and hold that position as well and from there going to going to world unders you know i'm still learning um I, this is eight years in total of fighting, so I started my I had my very first amateur fight in 2013, just after the Olympics. Wow! Um, after watching the Olympics, the next year I had my first fight as an amateur. So, still a lot of learning to do. I've only I think I was only 23 amateur fights. Wow! Wow! The amateur fights I had. So it's not the biggest amount of experience, but I've since I started boxing, you know, it's been I've dedicated myself so hard. I've been hours and hours and hours, endless hours in the gym. So I did kind of had to play catch up, but um, the proof is in the pudding now. You know, I'm, I'm able to get, get boxers out there that are more experienced than I am. Every fight that's hard, I get to step up. Um, so yeah, yeah, so it's a very good division. It's a, and it's an exciting one as well. Yeah. How far do you think you are off taking the top on the top guys in the sense that I'm sure you could get a big fight 
in your next fight if you really wanted one. But right. I'm sure you have to take into consideration yourself and Aaron and your team that when you get there, it's about staying there. So would you yeah. welcome, like, for example, this year to carry on developing and then maybe in 12 months go all out for them? Uh, yeah. Um, the, the British division, I would love to take the, the British title by the end of the year. I would love to have a crack at it by the end of the year. And, um, you know, just prove, my step, my, prove myself each step of the way. So, you know, we had the Southern area first. We had the English now. Then the British is next, obviously. So I'll, I'll, I'll run, I want to want to take those steps rather than skipping anything. Prove myself at each level. And um, I, w- I think I'm ready for the British by the end of the year. To be honest, if we can get that fight, then there's no way we're turning it down. We haven't turned down any fights, really. So we yeah. take anything. <laughs> Who wins that British title fight out of Chris Jenkins and Echo Esserman? Um, I haven't seen much of um, Chris Jenkins, but I think he's a bit small at the weight. Yeah, he's been um, he, was, he was at the light of weight for a while. He's done well yeah. to keep that title. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I, I think uh, with Usman's style, it may be a bit too much for Chris Jenkins. I don't know too much about him, so I, I can't comment too much about, about it. But um, I do reckon uh, Usman can win it. I don't know how how skillful um, Jenkins is or how how much of a um, operator he is. But, um, yeah, I think um, Osman could would could take that title. He's got a lot of skills, Osman. You know, I think you're, you're yeah. right there, definitely. So do, do you think, um, you, you know, well, sorry, not do you think, how did you end up, I was reading somewhere, you was with Paul Dogbo and you end up in Los Angeles with James Tony. Oh, yes. Uh, what yeah, so about? Um, so that's when I started my, my I started my amateur career with um, Paul Dogbo. He, I think, at the time that I met Paul, Isaac had just gone off to the Olympics. It was, it was really random. Yeah. I think I just met because we live very close to each other, probably about five minutes away from from Paul. And uh, we met in in the gym, and he literally just came up to me and said, "Oh, can you fight?" And I said, "That's a bit of a weird question," but I was like, "Yeah, I can fight." And he said, "So if he was in the street right now, and like someone was to like try to fight, you." you could you fight and win? And I was like, I was like, uh, all right, yeah, I could, I could do that. <laughs> and he's like, all right, um, why don't you come to the boxing gym and um, do some training? And previously to this, I had been to the boxing gym when I was in school, probably about for about four months, just because there was like there was a sports academy at my school, so I signed up for it. I heard there was boxing in it. I always loved boxing, never knew how to do it though. But um, so I did have a little bit of knowledge, like your your basics basically. So I started of pool and literally just never looked back from there. I think within about six months, I had my first amateur fight in 2013. That year, we won the national developments um, in the competition. The next year, again, we won the nationals. And uh, that that second year, we won the nationals. James Tony was in England doing the prize fighter. So Paul had um, contacted him somehow. They were, they were connected somehow. And then... Uh, we got Paul. We got uh, James Tony's manager to come down to see me fight in the finals for my nationals. He saw me fight. I said, "Yeah, whenever you're ready, just come over to LA with us, and we're going to turn a uh, professional over there." And literally, as soon as I won it, I was like, "Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go." I was just excited to go over there. So, yeah, that's how that came about. And yeah, we had my first three professional fights over in LA. So, what what made you come back back home? Obviously, friends, family, but any other reason? Uh, yes, I, I had my daughter on the way as well. Oh, right. I had so. my daughter on the way, yes. Um, by the time I had my first fight, I think she was probably going to come out in probably, I, I don't know, a few months, something like that. So, yeah, I came back. Um, while I was back over here, they, um, some ties had been, there was a dispute in management um, over there. So we didn't end up going back out there. We just carried on over. Um, I think the next one was in Ghana the next year, actually. So there's been a lot of st- stops and starts. A lot of stops and starts, but um, you know, I'm still glad because we've got I've got to enjoy the journey. You never had to rush things. Like I said, I only had only 23 amateur fights. In the times that we stopped and start, I've always kept on training. So, uh, yeah, the, the thing is, when you get to a certain level, you you want to stay there. You know, you want you get to a certain level, you want to progress. You don't want to get get somewhere and then go backwards. Yeah. So. Um, it's, it's still been a good thing. It's, still, it's going to be the, the stops and starts have been a blessing in disguise, I would say. Yeah. Just before we go back to that, what was James Tony like? 
Oh, he was he was he was a character. <laughs> Jason Thomas was a character. We, we was just see him with his with his cigars and he's he was just unruly, you know, Jason Thomas. But um, he did have a lot of gems. He did he did uh, just give you little hints and tips, things you can do in there. And a lot of the time, a lot of the time, nine times out of ten, they will work. So it was a really good experience. Really good experience being uh, being around him. You were saying that, you know, it's been a bit of a stop start to you in America, Ghana, and then the pandemic yeah. last year. How important yeah. is it now for you to get some momentum and get back out again as soon as possible, even if we're another few months without crowds? Yeah. Because, you know, the, you look on social media, there's been, a, a, particularly last week after the fight, there was a lot of love for yeah. you from boxing fans who may yeah. not have seen you before. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, man, it would be so important to keep to keep the momentum now because... Uh, as we won the Southern Area in 2019, uh, the momentum kind of came to a halt again. Yeah. I had two more fights, um, but they were just journeymen and then, you know, very hard to come by a fight after that. And then next year, obviously, the pandemic ha- happened. Uh, no fights at all in 2020. So now we have the belt. We're keeping hold of it and we're taking all, all, all challenges, you know, so... It's, it's 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 an incentive to people for people to fight us now. Before it was people wouldn't want to fight us because there was no reward. But now we have a belt on the line. We all we're, all challenges are welcome. Yeah. So you want to hear them calling you out, telling the world what they're going to do to you? Oh, oh man, I'm telling you, it, all challenges are welcome. All challenges are welcome. You know that we're here to fight. You know I'm here to fight. That's what I train for. That's what day to day life is preparing myself for these for fights like this so all challenges are welcome and I just we just, we just want to be busy this year yeah and tell us about your relationship with Aaron McLeish of course he was known for, he was in London with Prince Patel people knew him for yeah. that and then he was living up the road from me in Manchester for a while now he's back in yeah. London so you know people might not know Aaron but he's quite experienced isn't he and a, a decent trainer yeah. I understand from what people tell me up here yeah. anyway oh uh, yeah he's a, he's a really good trainer he's a He's a technician and he's a, he's not a trainer, he's a teacher. He, he teaches the sport, you know, and um, he is very precise, you know, every, everything is to the, to the finest detail with him. And I think that's what made me, that's what made me think, yeah, this is definitely the guy to train me. Um, after my, after Paul Dogbo, my amateur trainer, I had quite a few, um, quite a few trainers just moving around trying to find like a suit. And uh, I had one session of Aaron and I was like, Do you know what, this guy, he knows what he's doing. You know, there's, there's some similarities to him and Paul. They're, 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 they're very different in their, in their own respects, but um, there's there's some similarities where they're, they're very, they fine-tune you, basically. So the little DL is repetition, 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 and they make sure you're basically getting it right. So they're not they're not going to just blow smoke up your, you know what I mean? They're just going to be like, oh, yeah, 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 everything's good. If something's wrong, they're going to let you know about it and they're going to make you fix it. So um, that's what that's one thing that stood out to me about about Aaron. He has his own style as well. Um, it's very different from how I I was um, taught boxing. I've lost you there. Sorry about that. There you go. You were saying their styles are very different. So, hello. Hello. Yeah, you were saying the styles are very different. Yeah, the styles are very different. So, um, did have to learn. It was that having to learn over again, uh, boxing. But um, it's a, it's a style that's proven. You know, we go out sparring, we go here and there in, in the fights as well. Everything, everything seems to be working with it. So, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. That's right. Well, Sam, all I can do is thank you for speaking to us on VIP TV today. And I hope our subscribers and viewers enjoy watching the interview and learning a little bit about more about you. And I uh, hope life continues treating you well for the next few months. And uh, the fights come in and the big money comes in and you're the king of Stockwell forever. 100%, 100%. Uh, yeah, well, just follow the journey. You know, everyone watching in, follow the journey. We're going to the top... Uh, top of the British scene and then we're going to take it further Europeans world you know that's the aim so like I said we're going to prove ourselves each step of the way top two in Britain and not number two thanks very much for your time Sam thank you thank you Steve much appreciated for our boxing 
info, news and latest interviews, amateur and pro, across the north, click and subscribe, VIP, boxing promotions, also Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.